Alright, so I have a customer here that has yellow jackets. You can see that there's a couple of holes. I think they're just underneath this plywood. see some envelope there. Hopefully they're just directly underneath this ply. We just pop that off and get this nest out. All right, so first things first, get start getting the adults vacuumed up. Um, so there's actually two holes. Uh, there's one right at the corner, and then there was one like halfway to the gutter. So I just uh, ripped off some duct tape and decided to tape over that hole. I don't need them coming out of two different holes. Uh, especially if there's quite a quite a large amount, which there actually was in this nest. This is a Dolica Vespula arenaria nest, which is usually they make the um, the conical nests that just like hang from tree branches and things. But for whatever reason, this queen decided this would be a good spot to be inside the uh, inside this uh, overhang on this roof. So these guys are similar to bald-faced hornets in, in how they uh, build their nests and how they behave, uh, but usually there's a bit, there's quite a bit more, um, more of a population inside these nests than, say, a bald-faced hornet. So I just pull a few of these screws out, drop this uh, plywood down. Uh, they were swarming pretty heavy, so I did have to use a little bit of the fogging black flag, but I didn't spray the nest with it, just just uh, the swarm. there she be. It's definitely a decent sized nest. And it's always funny when um, I find yellow jackets inside of like buildings like this is that how random the paper can be. It's just like, you know, they're, they're building in the dark for one thing, so they're just kind of like laying it however they feel like as they come back with a little bit of pulp to lay down some envelope. A lot of larvae, um, a lot of adults, and some beautiful paper. So there really wasn't a way to relocate this one. Uh, just to, whenever there's a cavity building yellow jacket, um, it's it's virtually impossible to bag them and get a lot of adults because I mean I can bag the actual nest and but the thing is if I don't have a lot of adults those larvae are just going to die anyway um, so this nest unfortunately was just going to be uh, just a, a straight removal and then um, harvesting the larva to feed to my chickens and the nest itself I'll save So the larvae are the are the creamy looking color that are wiggling around. The white are the silk caps that the larvae weave when they're ready to go to uh, to start pupating into an adult. Get a lot of comments um, in my videos asking what those are. So hopefully this will negate the reason to uh, ask that question in the comments. So I was just trying to vacuum up a few of the, uh, the stragglers that are still on the nest, which are probably new hatched, newly hatched adults. So they're not flying; they're just kind of hanging out on the comb. I'm gonna get this up inside. Still swarming pretty good too, but I wanted to get a nice close-up shot at up inside of between the rafters. You're spraying me something fierce. Let me just get this nest down. Oh man, that metal makes me have to sneeze. <clears throat> I don't know what it is about that battle, but it always kind of like tickles my nose. Like I have to, like I just like huffed in a bunch of sawdust or something. People often ask what it smells like. Venom kind of smells like a sweet chemical smell. I don't know how else to describe it other than that. 
But these guys being a lot like bald faced hornets by being a Delica Vespula arenaria, is that they uh, they also spray venom like bald faced hornets do. So as they're flying, mid-flight, they'll actually shoot venom from their stinger. And they can shoot pretty far. And it's kind of like, it acts kind of two ways. It can get in your eyes and burn, but for them it's also a marker. So they the, um, the swarm knows where to attack. It's really incredible. Pheromone communication. Not all those adults up behind there. There's a lot of males in there too, so they, this this nest was about to be reproductive. I didn't find a queen just at that moment, so um, but it, it may be in the vacuum. But there's there were probably over 1,500 in this nest, and. In my vacuum, just a big clump of uh, just a mass of adults. So I haven't really gone through there yet to find the queen. So this is after I got them home. Um, there were a few that had hatched while driving home, and uh, got the uh, just had the vacuum up. The last few that were in there, a couple flew out, but they wouldn't last very long without the nest. So I just want to get some close-up shots of the larvae. And uh, these are actually going to be queens and males. And this is actually a mixed bag of queens, males, and workers. This is another one of the combs, and this one was still stacked, and you can see the structures that hold these together. Super, super incredible. And like bald-faced hornets, these nests are very, very strong. Unlike the ground nests that I removed that are brittle, these ones, I mean, you could, you can bend these, you can grab them. They are just super, super tough. Um, and all those like support structures in between are just like super hard. There's always little chasms and corridors and tunnels in between there. It's really cool. Of course, it always makes it a little bit spooky when you're handling them because you just never know if there's one still inside there. So for all you ASMR people, there's some tweezing. As someone said in the comments, um, this video went, or this channel went from being a removal channel to be just solely an ASMR of larvae and chickens. <laughs> so, I'm fine with it. I like making videos you guys enjoy, and I like seeing in the comments that you guys are enjoying things. Um, something to get asked in the comments is how come I tweeze them out, and why not just give the whole nest to the chickens? Well, the thing is, the chickens are great about getting the larvae out. But they do leave a lot in the in the comb too when I do that, so it's kind of a waste. So I, I like to tweeze out as many as I can, and uh, and then give them give them the individual larva, and then and then give them the the comb afterwards, and then they can like really nitpick about what like, what they get out of it, and usually unhatched adults and the rest of the larva that I didn't tweeze out. It's almost like if I give them the whole nest with all the larvae in it, they're almost going to get overwhelmed with uh, how much there is to get out of there, and uh, they don't get everything. So it's just peeling off some of these silk caps so you can see what's underneath of there. That's a whole sack of a larva. And that silk cap is weaved by the larvae themselves. It's not weaved by the adults. A couple people were asking that in the comments too. And it's really, really tough to get that stuff off. Like it's, you can hear this when I pinched that one and broke him. 
So it's easier just to go with your fingers and just pull it off. Sometimes. So the larvae are just kind of like up in like a little sleeve when they're in there. I don't know how they really like weave it all the way down beside themselves, especially big ones like that. Like how they like get get the silk all the way down, but they do somehow. I was trying to find a uh, a developed one so I could do a close up, but all the ones I was pulling out, any of the developed ones were breaking as I was pulling them out. So I was just throwing them out to the chickens right away. This one kind of had a split at the bottom of it and popped. So I think that one was already dead when I pulled it. And sometimes they are, they're dead underneath the uh, underneath the caps and then you'll see, like when I do my bald faced hornet um, observation videos, you can see adults like tearing open the silk caps. They like, somehow they know that there's one not doing so good underneath the cap and then they tear open the cap and pull them out and fly off with them. This one was a really interesting comb. It had shoots and cells like popped off the side of it instead of just being on the surface, which I thought was kind of cool. So this is a partially developed yellow jacket. Has a lot of black to it, not, not too much yellow at this point. That one kind of got busted. The stage in between larva to adult where they're, they look like a larva, like they're the same color, but they have like the, the structures of an adult. They are super, super delicate, like more delicate than a, this is a dead one here. Um, they're super delicate, even more delicate than the larva skin. Like they don't, they're just like, you look at them and they fall apart, it's wild. It's another partially developed adult. It's able to move, so it's got muscle function now. And the chickens will eat the partially developed adults. They'll pretty much eat any of the adults that haven't hatched yet. But for whatever reason, maybe maybe their shells get too you know, too uh, hard or something. But they don't eat the actual adults. So I successfully got a um, larva-looking or pupation stage that was really really soft. And uh, so you can see the dark parts where its eyes are developing. You can see it has the shape of an actual adult, has legs. And it basically just looks like a larva with a few developing features on it, which is really interesting. So the, the purple spots are its eyes. And then you can see obviously see the legs and you can start to see the, uh, the differences in its abdomen, the different layers and segments. So like I said, this is a pretty big nest. Uh, there's there's three layers in the back there, and then there's one big one here, and then there was a queen comb. Well, actually two queen combs. They were starting, they're probably gonna morph into one. So I figured I'd tweeze a few more out of these for uh, for you tweeze larval hulks. And plus, I want to get some great close-ups of the uh, of the larva. I was really happy with these shots that I got, where they're. I mean, besides that one, like that, where you can see like the, you can actually see the anatomy of these things. And it's just wild to think that this turns into a yellow jacket. And it's just like it doesn't look anything like a yellow jacket, other than its mandibles and its eyes, compound eyes on its head. But this one's weaving silk. I thought that was really neat. You can actually see the silk coming out of its mouth and it's weaving it onto that newly forming cap. But not for long. Bloop! I 
It's almost, they almost look rubber up close like this. Everyone hiding, didn't want to come out. Look like, like somebody wrapped up in a sleeping bag. And this is in real time. This is the not sped up. I just want to get a, a uh, want to get get you guys a feel of like what this uh, what these guys look like look like up close and in real time. And these guys, I mean, this particular species is just like bald-faced hornets. They're very very big. Like their larvae are really like bulky. Unlike the uh, the video I've done recently of the eastern yellow jackets that were in the ground, their larvae are just so thin and small, and it's actually really hard to tweeze out. The chickens were around me pretty much the entire time. Just Angel kept pecking at the back of my leg. She does that to try to get my attention to throw her something. And every now and then you can hear Ginger doing her little squeal. Like, you remember I'm over here and I'm, I want what you're doing. So, Pretty much any time I, I pull that blue Rubbermaid bin off my truck, they come running. They, they just associate that with these <laughs> larvae. So there was a dead larva. Um, one of the combs, so I wanted to, it was pretty much falling apart, so I, I tweezed off a little bit of its guts and uh, decided to show you guys how they eat. Look at that black line up its back. It's so wild. It almost looks like there's a heart beating in there. Um, so I just tweezed off a little bit of it to feed them so you guys could see how they, how they eat up close. So how these uh, nests work is the adults feed the larva solid food so the adults go out and hunt and they catch insects or bugs and then they bring them back chopped up and they feed them to the larva because the adults cannot eat full food um, their waste can't handle solid food so they feed that food to the larva which acts like an external stomach where they they eat it and then they digest it and then they regurgitate this fluid that has a lot of nutrients in it that they it's almost like a bead of, of water it looks like on their mandibles and then the adults will come around and tend to the larva and they will get that they will eat that uh, fluid and that's their sustenance so aside from aside from the larva's regurgitation they also then um, they also eat nectar from flowers and other uh, sap off trees and things like that but the larva are their primary primary food source. So you can see them here chewing up this, the guts of this other one. Try to get some really close shots, which I was pretty happy with these. And it's wild too. I mean, if you stay and watch long enough, you see like that the stuff just like disappears. Like they actually like gulp it all up. I was really happy with this shot. It's Great shot. You can see really, really close into their mouths and how they eat. This is how they, the adults do it. The adults will lay a little bit of glob of something on their what I call their belly, and then they just kind of peck at it. I love watching them run. They were watching me for like. 
15 minutes, so they get ahead of me. They knew what was happening. Hey. Oh, Tiggers, you're gonna join the fun too. Hi, Tiggers. Snuck up on Tiggers. That was me. Here we go. I think right here. Spend all that time pulling all those larvae out, and it takes them, I mean, what is this, 40 seconds, 50 seconds to get all the larvae eaten. That's worth it, they enjoy it. And I enjoy giving it to them. Circle of life. You gotta stand up for yourself, pigeon. Hi, Ginger. Hi, Ginger. Hi, Angel. Hi, Angel. Hi, pigeon. Hi, pigeon. Oh, Tegos. Hi, Tegos. Hi, Tegos. Hi, Tegos. So this is the catch from the entire day. That one removal. There's a lot of adults in there. I started to count them and I got up to about 500 and it was like an eighth of the entire catch. So I'd say it's about 1500 of this. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching. If you guys enjoyed what you watch here, uh, check out my other videos. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please consider doing so and I'll catch you guys on the next one.